profile on Gary Dunn. And we've got just a huge audience here tonight. Don't know what's going on, Les, but um, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Les Hinton. Hi, Gary. Thank you for coming in. Pleasure. So, so nice to have you here. Um, the pair of us. And the pair. I might eat that afterwards. Yes, yeah. no problem. I think that was Al's dinner. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll buy him some hungry dads. For some reason, it got on the set with everything else here. So, anyway, um, let's get to the interview. Sure. Where were you born, Liz? I was born in Turek Gardens, Adelaide. Yep. And uh, moved. I, my mother brought me over when I was three weeks old, and we grew up in Subiaco. So I spent most of my life in Perth. Yeah. And what instruments do you play? I play a little bit of guitar, but I wouldn't call myself a guitar player. Yeah. I was mainly a singer. Yeah, yeah. I remember you as a singer. And so, what was the turning point in your life that that made you decide that you were going to do what you do? Well, my brother, one of my older brother, was in the, involved as a, a nightclub owner. Had a few nightclubs. Was also a promoter with a chap called Peter Snow in the sixties, yeah, and they used to bring over Eastern States bands. He would kindly take me down to some of the venues that he was involved with, like St Pat's, and yeah. I would see bands at the age of thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. Johnny Young and the Strangers, the Zodiacs, some of the bands that Rick Selby was talking yes. about. Yeah. And so uh, then I saw Marty Roan. Uh, he was dressed up like a, like one of the Sergeant Pepper characters from yep. the album. And I thought all the girls were yelling out. And I thought, gee, this looks like a pretty, yeah. pretty interesting life. So yeah. my mother was a bit of a singer. Um, so uh, I think we just followed that I wanted to become a singer and thought, well, don't like working, so maybe mm. I'll try and be a star. <laughs> so started out from there basically yeah cool and your first band uh was fast fading at the age of 16 you were the front singer in that and obviously from what you've told me before it was was fast fading it was very fast fading yeah last i think we did about four shows one of them was middleton beach stomp down in albany yeah uh, with a wow. local band called radiant catch and i think some of those guys yeah. from there live up here you remember that band i well? do remember a band called yeah. radiant catch yeah. wow yeah. so 1970 to 1972 you sang for Backshot with Richie Papalivas. Uh, Buckshot, yeah. Uh, bu sorry, Buckshot. I've got back shot here. My producer just lets me down so many times, Liz. Look, so Buckshot with Richie Papalivas, Dennis Williams. Dennis so, Williams on guitar, yeah. What sort of music were you doing? Well, that was days? everything. In those days, you, you played a bit of everything, uh, mainly album music. You know, there was yep. a bit of rhythm and blues, a bit of progressive rock like Gary Wright and oh, even right. Deep Purple and people like that. But yep. it was R&B based, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. And you moved to Melbourne. I moved uh, to Melbourne. End of 72 with the, the Zar Brothers. They, I got a call, I was in Carnarvon singing with the local farmers trio and Reg rang me up and said, <laughs> look, we're on New Faces on Sunday, this was Friday, can you, our singer's just left us, can you come over and sing? The singer who left was Angry Anderson, so wow. I, I hopped on a train, uh, on a plane, got there, learnt the song on Saturday night and we were on New Faces on wow. Sunday. Wow. And that band was uh, called Benefit, which turned out to become Buster Brown, Angry Anderson came back, which later became Rose Tattoo. Oh, wow. Unreal. So, so there, the, was, there, was, there was Ivan, there was Reg. Ivan and Reg, and the rest and of the musicians were Melbourne musicians. Wow. Yeah, John Moon and people like that. I've got a Zazoff joke, but I'm not going to go there. Look, solo cabaret act. Um, I did that after the, the band broke up. I thought um, I didn't... Was, it, was this tired. in Melbourne? This was in Melbourne, yeah. yeah. I was a bit tired of the, the band scene because you... You'd ha you couldn't control your, your own destiny. Mm. So I, there was a bit of a market for... I went on New Faces and then Johnny Young's company uh, rang me. They were quite impressed. I think I came second. And they asked me would I do some cabaret solo work. Yeah. I wasn't really the John Farnham type because yeah. so, I was singing rhythm and blues and yeah. rural songs and I wasn't really quite the pop singer that they wanted. However, I did get work uh, in doing floor shows yeah. at clubs and hotels yeah. and functions, things like that. So I did that for a couple of years. So yeah. do you know Johnny Young quite well? Or? I met Johnny Young only briefly. He had a, a, a manager of the company. I can't remember what his name was, but he was the person that I dealt with yeah. mainly, yes. So I've been trying to get him on the show. My producers just... You'd have a lot of interesting stories. Well, you know, I, I kept saying to my producer, Johnny Young, Johnny Young, Johnny Young, mm. West Australian. Can you help me here? Because he obviously can't. 
I don't know him that well, but I could probably contact yeah. him because yeah, sure. he's yeah. currently involved with the Carpenter, County yeah, yeah. Carpenter um, show. Yeah, Narell Bell. Yeah, good, Narelle. good friend yeah. of ours. Yeah, mm. love to love to get him on the show. So, um, solo cabaret act. So uh, you moved to England. Moved after to this England for three years. Yeah. You you were there at the beginning of the punk movement. That was um, starting to happen. Yeah. Can you tell us about? That era well, it was interesting. Was I actually on. saw the television. They were invited to be on a uh, television show to talk about what their band was all about, and they were goaded a bit by the host. And the host said, "Oh, do something, do something naughty." So they all yelled out, "Fuck you!" <laughs> the next day, the the front every paper in Britain had Sex Pistols swearing on television. Yeah. And they got they were signed to EMI. EMI paid them half a million pa- thousand pounds to get rid of their contract so they didn't have to deal with them. They went on to become probably the most successful punk band for that yeah, next couple of years. Absolutely. And were, you know, yeah. the uh, inspiration for many other punk bands that were that became better bands yeah. over the years. Yeah. Any other stories from that that sort of scene in England when you were there or um not right. I wasn't really too involved in the punk scene itself. I mm. mean, it wasn't music that interest, interested me. I went to see Eric Burden, who interested me, yeah. and his support act was a track called Ian Jury. He had a band called Ian Jury and the Kilburns. Oh, fantastic band. And he walked on in a straight jacket and earring, uh, he had polio, razor blades. He? he had polio, yeah, yeah. yeah. Razor blades hanging from his ears. Mm-hmm. And I was there to see Eric Burden. I couldn't yeah. quite, what's this guy all about? The first song was about lunatic asylums. By the third <laughs> song, I thought the guy was brilliant. Yeah. Better than Eric Burton was. Yeah. And two years later, he was the, he had a band called The yeah. Blockheads and it was the biggest thing in Britain. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Andrew and The Blockheads. You played in a band called Tequila, was that in England? Tequila for a short time in yeah. Watford. It was a Watford-based band. Yeah. and uh, 30 k's outside of London. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right on the border of the country. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it was a good little band. There was uh, two or three songwriters. I had started writing songs. I had written songs previously, that while I was in Perth. But there was a one of the chaps was a good songwriter, so we pulled our ideas and did a demo. Um, and then I think there was record company interest, but the the main chap of the band decided to give up, and mm. so the band broke up, and I went back to working solo. It's just so typical music, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you back to Perth in '77. Came back to Perth. Yeah, got a job as a singing teacher. For Johnny Young Talent School. Well, the Johnny Young Talent School. Trying to get Johnny Young on the show. Yeah. So hopefully you can help me with that. Cause well, two or can't. three of my students actually got to were picked to appear on the show that was based in, who, in Victoria. Who, yeah. who were they? There was a ch- young chap called Michael Clark. Yeah. Um, not the cricketer. No, no, not the cricketer. Almost drunk. No. He had blonde hair though. Yeah. yeah. So. He was, had a lovely voice, yeah. and I can't quite remember the other couple of young young fellas who got mm. picked. Um, mm. But yeah, I did that for a couple of years. I also taught privately with a lot of singers from bands mm. from Perth who well, found out about me and came to learn how to sing. I can remember Rob Hartley. Rob Hartley from Gypsy. Saying something about that. Don Mariani. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ty Coates. Ty Coates. I mean, yeah. they're all great singers. So you obviously they had, good voices, had, yeah. had something to do with... Um, I, I think what they were finding, singing rock, particularly people like Ty yeah, and, and Rob, they were pushing their voices and they were getting sore throats. They were wondering how do we stop doing that and it was all about technique and breathing mm. and things like that. Maybe I should come to you for some singing no. lessons because that's all I do. I don't have time for that anymore, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you started playing guitar in 1980? Yeah. You, yes. you just started teaching yourself guitar? No, I went to a teacher. This was when I was yeah. in... Uh, well, actually, I learned when I was in England about 78, learned the basics of guitar from a teacher and from there developed, wrote songs. I mainly wanted to learn how to write songs better without relying mm. on somebody else and giving them the notes and them working yeah. out. Yeah. So, And I was also... You know, stopped doing the cabaret type singing and became a solo guitar singer. Yeah, and worked around Perth and smaller venues yeah. for a little while. Yes. Who, who was your booking agent in those days? Can you uh, me. I used to <laughs> ring up the venues and say, "Would you give me a job?" So you had a bush band called Bonza Creek. You know, it, they were a band that band? a couple of the, the bush music, folk music, as the mm. the real term, was very popular in that uh, era. 
there was bands like Mucky Duck who could pull 3,000 people. Mucky Duck Bush Band. Yeah. I they, remember them. So well, they well. would do a dance at Fremantle Road and get 3,000 people, which we was used, more than the rock band. We used to play around the corner in a band called Mechanics, a punk band. Oh, okay. I think in 1979. Yeah, and I remember that name. Yeah, yeah. I, there was, the only place open was where they were playing, so we used to go and watch them with their... Yeah, they had yeah. all sorts of... Well, they were extremely popular, and the secondary mm. band, the next most popular bush band was the Bonza Creek Bush yep. Band. A couple of the boys came for singing lessons, and they were asking me, would I be interested in, in looking after their affairs, mm. um, which I did. Uh, and from there, it built with the demand for them. They weren't available, so I needed other acts to fill the demand mm. and request for work. So I started building up a... A stable of different sorts of acts. So this is where the Les Hinton. This is where the agency, agency f um, formed from. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you got any gigs for me, Les? What, can you find me some gigs? I'll get some gigs for you, Gary. <laughs> I don't do a lot anymore. I mainly concentrate on tours, but I'm sure there's no, something look, I, for No, I get your emails. I have rung your young lady, and you've always been booked on the nights that I've offered. Yes. <laughs> no, look, uh, I, I appreciate what you do, and uh, you bring bands Thank over, and, you. yeah. and you're still. Uh, promoting live music and and that's what we're doing about. a lot of tours yeah, yeah over yeah. the last 10 and it's not an easy years. thing is it i mean I, I mean i know from many years of experience that uh, you lose you win you lose you win mm. you can't mm. always pick uh, well 10 10 to 15 years ago i could pick how many people they were going to get within a couple of hundred yeah whether that act was going to be popular whether that yeah. wasn't going to be popular so i'd knock them back these days you can't pick. I, I mean, I've had world class. I've had Kurt Elling recent recently, who's mm. Downbeat Magazine, which is the major jazz mm. magazine in the world, voted him for the last fourteen years the best jazz singer in the world. Yet I've got four hundred and ten people. Yeah. So, um, so what do you what do you think that that is? Is there an oh, answer, or is there a, a, a formula, or? That, well, it's a, it's a it's a good question. I I, I don't know the answer to that mm. because I pushed it at Whopper, just about all the jazz magazines. Yeah. Uh, he has been to Perth previously, yeah. but he'd only done little sh gigs like yeah. Ellington's, yeah. which is only 150 yeah. people. So, uh, I I think probably. May have extended the, his popularity more than what it was. <laughs> so, but he was absolutely brilliant, and mm. anybody who went there would definitely come back. Mm. I've had at least eight or nine emails saying mm. how great it was that I was prepared yeah. to bring him to Perth. Yeah, because yeah. if you like the uh, the alternative bands, because I remember you were an agent from '87, but some of the acts you looked after the Triffids, the Stems, you know, Dave Hull, Paul Dave Kelly, Hull. and he's still. Yep. Looking after Dave. Still oh, looking after, after Dave. Yeah, thank thank God. He, yeah. He's a good. He's fella. loyal. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. No, good for him, and, and obviously for you. But and light and housekeepers bands like that. So you've always, you've always promoted music, which um, a lot of alternative music yeah. in general. Because at that time in the eighties, you had other agents who were looking after the big cover bands. Yeah. I couldn't compete with that. No. But there was also Turnaway. I was quite smart where the big venues started being closed down and being knocked down and it was going down to small mm. venues who wanted piano players. I was booking 10 piano players at least twice a week or twice a night in Perth Did at Did you ever time. book Alan Pithers? Alan Pithers used to work for me. Most of his gigs were through me. <laughs> so, so you specialised in alter alternative acts general, and tours. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Flaming Groovers, Johnny Thunders Band. Is there any stories you can tell us about any of those tours? Well, there was a tours group or? called The Residents and nobody yeah. ever saw it because they used to have outfits with great big balls mm. over their faces, so nobody knew who they were. I found out there was actually two girls and two guys. They were a San Franciscan band, a very sort of cult band. They, they were doing really unusual music, uh, very clever. They used voice manipulators to change their voices. So long before the heavy metal bands or yeah. thrash bands started doing that sort of thing. Johnny Thunders unfortunately had a drug problem. I wasn't told about it and he was an hour late for the show at the <laughs> Melbourne Hotel. Lucky uh, you got there. If I've like, well, he was staying there actually. <laughs> but, <laughs> he was having to fall down but, the stairs. Yeah, it took an hour to get him out of bed. Unfortunately, <laughs> he was out of it and the hotel refused to pay <laughs> the money. So there was a tricky one. The band, when he did go on stage, Johnny Thunder was from the New York Dolls. He yes. had Glenn Matlock on bass from the Sex Pistols. The, the yeah. drummer was from the New York Dolls. It was quite a, a, 
a good band for that type of music. Did you know what you were letting yourself in for at no, that time? No, I wasn't yeah. told that he was a heroin addict. Yeah, you know? wow. And uh, unfortunately, even though he did the shows, he was an hour late. I sent them down the Bunbury that rolled the van. They were lucky to be alive. So it was a disaster too. But he was actually a nice fella. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, As opposed to some we were talking about um, off camera before. But So what was your biggest influence musically in life? What band or artist? What? Um, well, as a young person, I, I listened to a lot of rhythm and blues singers. My, my favourite singer for a long time was Lou Rawls, yep. who I thought is still the best R&B singer there is. Um, Excuse my ignorance, is he still with us? Like, no, he died no, uh, quite a few years yeah. ago, yes. But absolutely brilliant singer. Yes. Then when I was living in England, I uh, was told about a singer called Al Jarreau. Mm. And he, 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 would, he just had played a week uh, at Ronnie Scott's, a major jazz club in London. And from the strength of that, because it, 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 the effect was so good that a promoter brought him out the following year and he did a new Victoria Theatre, which is like our concert hall, yeah. 1800, packed full of young people through to old people. I was lucky to go and see him and I couldn't get out of my seat because there was a singer that did everything that I ever wanted to hear or be able to do or even just hear someone yeah. do. He was the best scatter. He, he had a five octave range. He could do everything from bass notes right through to flute sounds, mm. any instrument he could emulate with his voice. Right. Two years later, he was doing Wembley Stadium. Wow. Yeah, that's how big he was. Yeah. Wow. Un un unreal. So um, the, the acts that you've toured, and um, I get all the emails, 10CC, Art Garfunkel, Doobie Brothers, Eric Burden Animals, you know, Manhattan Transfer. Manhattan Transfer, yeah. I mean, a lot of good acts there. I mean, act. we talked a little bit before about 10CC, for instance. Uh, I mean, they were one of my favourite bands, and, mm. and they could never fill anything out. For some reason, they're not a big draw card. Mm. You know, I mean, I, to me personally, between them and say a band like Fleetwood Mac, I can't understand why the Fleetwood Mac get fourteen thousand people and Ten mm. CC get eight hundred because Ten CC songs are far superior, in my opinion, to Fleetwood Mac songs. Mm. However, people don't know the individuals. Everybody knows Stevie Nicks. Everybody knows the names mm. of people. Oh, the Doobie Brothers have the same thing. Uh, everybody knows the names of the people in the Eagles, but they don't know the names of the people mm. in the Doobie Brothers unless they're a big fan. Yeah. So unless you have a real identity mm. that's in the news. They were like yeah. session musicians as well, weren't they? Some of the 10TC guys, and they one of them went Alan Parsons Project. And yeah, they did a lot yeah. of different things, yeah. yes. Well, I brought over a, probably the world's top session guitarist called Larry Carlton mm. a couple of years ago. Uh, insane and guitar player. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. He's probably the best guitarist next to Paco Pena that I've seen. Mm. And Paco Pena is a flamenco Wait. guitar, completely different style, but yeah. Yeah. when you see him, you, you, you haven't heard guitar playing no. until you hear him. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. But Larry Carlton to me is the best guitarist I've ever mm. seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, grew up with him, listening to Lovely him, guy. trying to play, yeah. 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 I had to tell him, I, I said, are you doing Kid Charlemagne? He said, no, I haven't played that for 10 years. And I said, Before, you can't, you can't play that, improve you can't playing that. Kid Charlemagne. <laughs> right. So he got the band on my request. He got the band alerted that night. Yeah. They were lucky they were here a day before. Because the crowd would have gone nuts. Because I said, everybody yeah. knows Kid Charlemagne. It's, mm. it's known as the best guitar solo on, mm. in pop music. Yeah, absolutely. By a lot of guitarists. It's debatable, mm. but it yeah. is a pretty good solo. Yeah. He, co he couldn't play in improve without playing Kid Charlemagne. So he was professional enough. He got his band to learn it that night and they played it the next day at the wow. concert. Unreal. I thought that was pretty professional. Yeah. Mm. So what's, what's the biggest standout for you that someone you brought over and uh, that maybe surprised you with ticket sales or their performance? Is, is there something that sticks out there? Oh, there's been a lot of good ones. I mean, the Doobie Brothers were a very good band. Pulled a good, they sold out Burswood. Probably the... the my favourite band, the favourite show was Manhattan Transfer. Wow. They had a trio, probably the second next to Oscar Peterson, the second best piano player I've ever seen, a mm. Russian guy. Yeah. Bass player was magnificent. And you had two guy, two girls and two guys who were it's, it's probably the best voices you could ever hear. Wow. Whether it was a cappella or whether it was with a band, mm. they were absolutely brilliant. Where was that? At, I had them at the Regal Theatre. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So... is. The venues are obviously subsiding, yeah. um, uh, the opportunities. 
where today do you put acts? Well, you have got your small theatres like the Regal and the Astor. They seem to be popular for the acts under the 1200 yeah. mark. You've got the big Perth Arena now for the huge, you yeah. know, the, the major level acts. Then you've got your concert halls and that. But it is hard it, because we're getting so many big acts now, the little smaller middle level acts don't get the numbers that yeah. they would. I had Jose Feliciano uh, last mm. month. Mm. He normally would sell out you know, 1,200 people. Well, we got 750. Yeah. He was also up against the Festival of Perth and the Fringe. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of competition. Yeah. But, you know, 10 years ago, he would get 2,000 people mm. at, at somewhere like Burswood. Yeah, yeah. So I think the I do a lot of the older acts. Unfortunately, their audience is dying. And the young, there's no, not a big groundswell of young yeah. people who, who appreciate that type of music. So, so it's a bit make, sad. Does that make it more difficult now It does for make it more difficult, yeah. Than it was yeah. years ago? Or? Because you try and, you know, you do a TV ad or you do a radio ad, but then you've got to pick your audience. You and, sure? and even though Feliciano, some of his music has been sampled into DJ's music, the young people might know the song Light but by Fire, but they, they don't guy. know who, who yeah. who's the guy yeah. who sang it, apart from the doors. Yeah. Mm. So I remember you being in Subiaco for about... For many years. Yeah. yeah. About 30 years, about I think. About 30 years yeah. in my office. Yeah, I and, had two offices. Yeah, And yeah. you're working from home now? I work Mount, from home. Mount Lawley. In Mount Lawley, yeah, yes. Yeah. So how do you find that? Is it? Oh, uh, economically much more preferable. Yeah. And secondly, because I don't really have to deal with people coming to the door anymore. It's, it's Everything's done by email or phone these days. Yeah. So Different world. doing it at home, yeah. I can get out of bed when I want to and sit around in my pyjamas or, yeah. or my dressing gown if I want. I don't need to <laughs> dress up anymore. I, that thought just... Very uh, casual. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. But <laughs> So it's, it's obviously different today um, than it ever has been. Um, yeah. So what I, do you see in the future like with, with what you do, bringing eggs in, touring? Oh, well, I'll, yeah. do, I'll, I'll do it for... I mean, I was, I was going... You know, I'm always towards retirement age anyway i probably won't be doing this in five years time yeah um i still would like to there's one act i'd like to do which is my favorite actor chap called gino vanelli oh. unfortunately no one Fantastic. will go and will go and see him apart from maybe 200 people so yeah. it's, it's uneconomical to do him. but if i won lotto nick he would <laughs> be the first act i'd bring gino vanelli be he's 66 oh is that all yeah yeah, yeah. still yeah. young fella still doing the best music you've ever heard. He's got 20 years on me still. Yeah. So, um, any other jobs throughout your life? They... Oh, when I left school, I worked in the bank for about two years, but I was told off for having long hair, which was shorter <laughs> than what I've got now. <laughs> and I, you weren't allowed to wear coloured shirts. You had to wear a white shirt, a black tie, and have short hair. So I left that job and became a musician. I can wear blue shirts and silly... Yeah. Um, I don't know what this tie is, a moose tie or something, is it? Camel? it? Camel? Camel, yeah. Camel. And it goes down to my toe. Very good. So, um, so if you were... Um, Deserted on, a, on, a, on an island. Deserted island? Yes. What album Stranded. would I take? Yes. A uh, port you've seen the show before, haven't you? So you know. Oh, I've seen a few of your yeah. people that you've interviewed, yeah. yes. I'd take an album called A Pauper in Paradise, which is a Gino Vanelli album. Mm. One half is orchestrated with the London Symphony Orchestra. Wow. The other side is absolutely well-crafted pop songs. First time I've ever heard that one. It's a pretty old album. came yeah. out late 70s. So, um, your favourite TV show growing up? Did you watch TV or F Troop? F Troop, good. I thought it was very funny. Yeah, Corporal Agar. Yeah, yeah. Um, un unfulfilled ambitions. Do you have any? Is it something you would have liked to have done or that you can still probably do, like jumping out of an aeroplane or? Uh, I'd like to tour Earth, Wind and Fire and Gino Vanelli, but Earth, Wind and Fire when Morris was alive. Yes. Not the Earth, Wind and Fire today, even yeah. though it's still very good. But, but yeah, look, an ambition was to have Al Jarreau and Gino Vanelli on the same concert. They were both managed by the same manager at one stage, mm. which I thought would have been the standout concert of the the century, but it never happened. Al so, died a couple of years ago. And, yeah. and Gino's so as a promoter, you, you're thinking out of the box about... Well, Getting I've always different. been alternative. Mm. I tend to tour people probably to, which has probably been a mistake financially, but I tend to tour people that I like yeah. when the opportunity is, is yeah. there uh, yeah. rather than 
touring acts just to make lots of money. Um, I, I tend to have, yeah. you know, this, I've got to like them before I so would do them. You, you don't know them and you want to bring them over because you like them. Mm. Is there some, is there a, a mistake about, you know, like getting the people over and then when you finally meet them, is it is it what you expected or um, are you a, 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 I hate the word groupie as far as... You no, know, no, because uh, being in the business so long, I, I, I think talented people are talented people, but yep. they're just like you and I. Yep. Don't treat them like stars because then they'll tr treat you like shit. <laughs> so you treat them as normal people yeah. and you find that they're actually pretty normal. Yeah. Can you tell Apart us some, from a couple. Can you tell us some stories about Ike Funkel and Paul Simon? <laughs> <laughs> Ike Funkel was, was actually a difficult person. Uh, I think I'm not a doctor, but I think he has bipolar because one minute he's screaming at everybody, the next minute he's the nicest guy in the mm. world. Uh, it was a drama for a couple of days. When I met him at the airport, I did made the mistake of telling him that there's a couple of people from newspapers with photographers who may want to take a photo of you. Mm. So he got very scared, he wouldn't leave the top floor for an hour until I got rid of the photographers. The photographers I couldn't get rid of because they were there to do a job. <laughs> so in the end we were Just able to convince the photographers to not to take photographs. After an hour he came down uh, so and we why, took him to his hotel. Why wouldn't he want his photograph taken? What is well I think John Leonard had just been recently shot, oh, okay. had been shot in, around that time and there was a bit of paranoia about mm. being out in public but I also think it's probably part of his personality yeah. a problem yeah. that he had. Yeah. But once he walked on stage he was absolutely brilliant. Beautiful voice, great band yeah. and fantastic show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but a difficult scene. person. Yeah. And, and I think Paul Simon's got the same problem. So between the two of them, you wonder why they break up so many times. I yeah. thought Paul Simon might have a small man syndrome and then yeah. Garfunkel had the big man syndrome. What, well, I think whatever. that, yeah, there is a bit of that. <laughs> but you've got to admit that Paul Simon's probably the best songwriter there is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we're, we're all human beings. Next to so. Adam McCartney. And we're yeah. all human beings, yeah. yeah. Yeah, He's just retired. Lucky for him, I wish I could retire. <laughs> I'm still doing this. <laughs> Oh, but you enjoy it though, don't yeah, you, Gareth? I love yeah, it. that's the main thing. Actually, I've, I've got to mention, I, um, if you want to uh, subscribe to the shows, um, we've now got our, our own channel, www.procopy.com.au. No? Theprofile.com.au. Gee, I seem to have messed that up. Okay, so if you want to uh, have a look at our interviews, we've done over 60 so far. Um, www.theprofile.com.au Okay, I get my thoughts together. Um, so do you collect anything, um, Liz? DVDs. DVDs. I like movies. Yeah. Um, not CDs? Oh, I have quite a few CDs yeah. as well, but uh, I tend to prefer to watch, uh, uh, if, I'm, if it's a musical act, yeah. I'd rather watch them than yeah. just listen to a CD. Now, most, most of the acts you can get a CD or YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favourite? Have you got a favourite live DVD or? Earth, Wind and Fire in Tokyo. Okay. 1998. Wow. Absolutely brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Unreal. So um, what would you put on your gravestone? Very weak Some people have said to me, he was a good bloke. He was a good bloke. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, is there anyone that you know that you'd recommend that you'd want to come on this show or you think that we should have on this show? Or? I think, well, I'm, I'm not too sure how many people, but there's a lot of musicians. Dom mm. Mariani, has he been yeah, on? Yeah, Dom's, Dom's been Dom's on. Dom's been on? Yeah, you obviously yeah. don't watch every episode, but that's okay, no problem. Yeah. Uh, Terry Adderton. Terry Adderton's been, been on. on. Well, you've yeah. probably had all the ones that I know. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should go to www.theprofile.com and, and, and look at the and list. And look at them all, because they're all on there. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, we've, got a list, we've got a list of about 300 names um, that we're going to sift through. Excellent. And we continually sift yeah. through. So, oh, it's great! It's great, um, great support for yeah. the entertainers and yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the entertainers of Perth are wonderful people, and and they entertain. Yeah. <laughs> Gus Warburton, uh, yeah. he's a character. Well, we're going to get Gus, on? Gus and, and Phil and Phil together. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be perfect. Have they been on? Well, not yet. The producer's oh. still working on that, like Johnny Young and many others. Well, Phil only lives around the corner from me, apparently, so... Well, there you go. So <laughs> you should get them on, because they've got a lot of stories. Gus used to drive a truck when I was in the band with Reg and Ivan. Gus was the truck driver. Wow. 
in, in Melbourne in 1970, whatever it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, unreal. Mm. Gas the truck. And he's still on. driving, the stars. Yeah. Yes, he is. That's he his is. job. Yeah. 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 Obviously, he was with Peko, and, yeah, and yeah. sadly, Peko's no longer yeah, with us. And right. Peko's another person we interviewed. And, mm. and they're talking about people that aren't with us, Reg Carson, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, wonderful singer and, and gentleman yeah. and, in the industry. So. And that, that's what we're trying to do here is, is document the history and you're part of it. Uh, that's why you're on the show, Thank obviously. Yeah. And so there's people like Mike Nelson, Jenny Wren, yes. yeah. who were around in the days yeah. of Rick Selby, you yeah. know, with the yeah. Sweet Velvet. They were We've top interviewed Mike. Band. We've got to interview Jenny, obviously. I mm. uh, saw her at Reg's funeral, actually. Jenny, wonderful okay. person. Yeah. First time I'd ever met her, actually. So, mm. um, and there's, I'm sure there's lots of the younger musicians mm. in the last 10 years that would be uh, interested in coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Give you a younger person's perspective. Of We've had a couple. Have you had a couple a few, of younger uh, ones? Dave yeah. Harrison. Uh, who else we have, Al? Uh, Mike Bedelli. He, he came back from Germany recently. And Great guitar player. Yeah. Good singer, too. Yeah, fantastic. And mm. obviously. His band, Videli, used to be Dave Hole's backing band for a while. There you go. Mm. Yeah, and obviously Basil, his dad. We haven't interviewed yeah. Basil yet, but. Um, I well, we interviewed Basil. He's got a lot of stories yes, to tell. Yeah. He's a great keyboard player. He was yeah. he was in a fantastic band called Swing Shift mm. with Robert Taylor. Yes, probably one of Australia's best drummers. Who was a Perth boy who unfortunately died. Yes, ring the bell. Robert ring the bell. Taylor, yeah, Basil. Basil's a good fella. Yeah. So, any other stories from your from your booking that you can tell us about some irate musicians or anything? Any got any dirt in anyone? Else? Not a lot of irate musicians. Had irate op opposition agencies who would bring <laughs> me up and be a bit rude to me. Yes, uh, we've interviewed them. We've interviewed them. Oh, oh okay. Of okay. Of they probably, they probably didn't no, say they anything about me, did they? Yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't. Actually. No, there was a couple who used to give me a, a difficult time. It was very competitive, yeah. wasn't it? But I outsmarted them because they, as the rock, as the big rock and roll band was disappearing, and the piano players and the solos and the duos were coming up, the sequence acts, I was, I was handling them you doing and the not relying stuff. on the rock band. So, yeah. when they forgot that, not everybody wanted to go and pay five or ten dollars to see yeah. a cover band. Yeah. Uh, when they can get into a pub for free yeah. and see the you know smaller band doing the same songs yeah. or see a solo or a duo that sounded yeah. like a band. Well, so I got into that era, which was quite yeah. you know, lucrative for quite a while. Well, look, obviously the music industry is a tough industry to be and in. And it's changed. Now. Yeah, it's changed. yeah, it changed tenfold. DJs would come and go. When yeah. I first came back to Perth in the seventies, DJs were he had a band and a DJ. Yeah, uh, you know who would do opposite sets. Yeah, you know, and yeah. DJs have had their DJ days Johnny well. Gray. Um, yeah, gets a mention at the Cloverdale Hotel. Man, you know. Warwick. Just, what, what can I say? Just, <laughs> we've got to interview D, some DJ at some time. It, it probably has to be yeah. Johnny Gray. So Johnny, if you're yeah. watching Johnny, um, yeah. stay tuned. But um, look, um, I really thank you for having you on the show. It's been a pleasure. I hope you keep doing what you, you're doing because uh, bringing live music to the audiences is, um, is it's, second to none in my book. And, yeah, um, it, it's, yeah, it's good. You've always yeah, supported I the music it. industry and I really thank you for that, Liz. And, thank um, you, Paul. Um, you know. Not Paul. Gary. Gary. That's okay. Sorry, Gary. No, no worries. My brother's Paul. You, your brother's you Paul. Paul we were talking about your brother. That's probably what was in my no. head here. Yeah. No, no worries. Look, um, I've been called worse than that, Liz, so that doesn't affect <laughs> me. Um, look, no. thanks so much for coming in. Uh, it's been really, a great pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate your stories and, and, um, and your knowledge. And, um, yeah, um, thank you very much. Thank you. So, Mr. Liz Hinton, um, we'll see you next time. Don't forget, tune in, www.theprofile.com.au. You happy with that, Mark? Good night. To open our program, though, we're going to entertain you now with a lovely group. They were with us a couple of weeks ago, the Naughty Fish, and here's a great number, Not Fade Away. Love is to love and I 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 fade away.
loves to love and I fade away. My love's bigger than a Cadillac. Bum, 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 bum. Try to show up, but to drive me mad. Bum, 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 bum. Your love for me has got to be real. Bum, 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 bum. For you to know just how I bum, 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 bum. Love is to love and I fade away. Love is to love and I fade away. Love is to love and I fade away. I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna be. Bum, 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 bum. You're gonna give your love to me. Bum, 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 bum. Love should last for more than one day. Bum, 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 bum. Love is to love and I fade away. 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 My love's bigger than a Cadillac. Bum, 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 bum. Try to show, but you drive me mad. Bum, 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 bum. Your love for me has got to be real. Bum, 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 bum. For you to know just how I bum, 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 bum. Love is to love and I fade away. 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 Not fade away. Not fade away. Not fade away. And terrific, don't they? The naughty fish. And thanks to them for being on the program today. Oh, and give them a great big welcome, please, with Trickle Trickle. <laughs> Splash, splash, tell me how long will this train last? The rain keeps dropping, there ain't no stopping. Tell me how long will this train last? Trickle, trickle, slop, slop, just got to see my sweet tea drop. She's there waiting and I'm hesitating. Tell me how long will this train last? Run and dig my clothes here, boy. A one button roll. You know that I'm as sharp as a tack. Won't you lend me your Cadillac? Go, gotta go to a party, yeah, please let me show. If I don't take to no, I won't make it, I won't see my baby no more. Ah, uh -huh, trill, trill, splash, splash, tell me how long will this rain last? The rain keeps dropping, there ain't no stopping, tell me how long will this rain last? Trill, trill, slop, slop, just got to see my teeth, teeth drop. She's there waiting, I'm hesitating, tell me how long. And Ronnie, she's sweet, she's fine, yeah, boy, and I love her so. But if I don't take to the party, she is gonna go. Gotta go, gotta go to the party, yeah, please let me show. If I don't take to no, I won't make it, I won't see my baby no more. Ah, trill, trill, splash, splash, tell me how long will this rain last? Rain keeps dropping, there ain't no stopping, tell me how long will this rain last? Trill, trill, slop, slop, just got to see my sweet teardrop. She's there waiting and I'm hesitating, tell me how long will this rain last? Tell me how long will it last? Absolutely fabulous. Where are, you, where are you singing at the moment, Melvin? We're doing uh, Thursdays at Clickety's, a new restaurant in Cottesloe. Yeah. Um, Sail and Anchor every Saturday afternoon in Fremantle and mm. Novak's on Saturday nights. In you Perth. keep the costs down. You don't have to have any backing group, do you? That's right. That's <laughs> it's a good idea. It's a terrific sound. It's quite unique, actually. What other groups around the world do that start of singing? There's about half a dozen that are known in Australia. There's the Nylons from Canada who have come over for the Festival of Perth. There's Flying Pickets from England who are here recently. Mm -hmm. There is a band called the uh, Persuaders, uh, a Negro band which has been around for about 20 years, and yeah. General Barbershop Quartets, which are similar to us, but they're different in that they use straight harmonies where we do actual sounds with our voices to yeah. create the instruments. It's brilliant. It's rather unique, isn't it? I, it's a gorgeous sound. It. Do you favour that style of performing to that with a backing group? All of you? I think so, because we're all 
singers, yeah. and we prefer sort of actually using the voices rather than just being in a, with a band where you just actually sing lead vocals all the time. It gives us a chance to sort of use our voices a lot more than what the general singer would. Well, what it does, do. in fact, is requ requires talent, which Certainly. the four of you obviously yes. have. Of course. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Naughty fish, aren't they terrific? Thank you very much indeed.